Jesus Christ, speckles, are you trying to speed up the process and die as quick as possible because running away from home at your Jurassic age is insane behavior? So last time we talked, Rosalie Bastianich, the heir of Generation 2 of my Not So Berry Challenge, shared the news about her engagement to her high school sweetheart, Finley Broke, with her entire family, receiving mixed reactions, her mother and our founder, Gwyneth Westwood, completed a big career milestone of cloning a sim at work, and shared her concerns about her young daughter's engagement with her, before the family cat Speckles, decided to run away from home. Oh, and Rosalie and her man hunched non-stop, though, speaking from experience, I completely understand where they're coming from. Back to Speckles. Good God. After that very intense wicked session with her man Finley, Rosalie, sans clothing, immediately ran to her computer to put a notice online about Speckles' disappearance. She was worried sick, her childhood cat. Finley was chilling though, trying to regain his strength with one of his mom's famous cheesecake jars, he was really going to need his strength back, because after stretching Rosalie out, they were planning on stretching their whole bodies out together at a yoga class in Willow Creek, Finley loved yoga, in fact, his aspiration is Zen Guru, Rosalie has never tried yoga and wasn't very active, but she wanted to take up Finley's interests, plus, she heard that yoga can be relaxing, and she needed to feel relaxed more than anything. Finley would be leaving for Brightchester tonight and Rosalie would be leaving tomorrow in the afternoon. Classes start in today's and she would have to adjust to living on her own in the dorms and away from her family and friends for the first time. All of that in itself was stressful, but what stressed her out more is that today, she'd be breaking the news to Finley about going to Brightchester instead of Foxbury. She was sure he would handle it well, but she hated the thought of disappointing him, she felt the same about their engagement, they hadn't spoken of it since they broke the news to Gwyneth, Tanisha, and Bella. She was hoping Finley hadn't sensed Rosalie's minor doubts. She was going to stop thinking about everything and just enjoy the yoga class. It was actually pretty fun. But Finley, since you apparently do yoga all the time, tell me why Rosalie is eating you up right now. Rosalie had a great time with Finley. And it was even better that they had the whole class to themselves. She gave him a kiss before heading to brunch with him back in his hometown of Newcrest, hoping that Finley couldn't feel her heart heart racing as he held her tight. She honestly didn't even know why she was so anxious. Her and Finley had never once fought, but she couldn't shake a bad feeling. Damn you too, right in front of the yoga instructor. Finley eventually stopped macking on each other and made it to the restaurant, her anxiety was through the roof, so she dropped the bomb about college immediately after being sat. She wasn't going to Foxbury with him, she was offered a distinguished degree and would be going to Brightchester, she found out before their trip to Tartosa. She was so sorry for not telling him before they left, but she didn't want to spoil the fun of their trip, that, and she was a bit worried about what he would say, Finley was so surprised that Rosalie was so anxious to tell him this. Did she really think he would be upset with her for choosing what's best for her future? He wasn't mad at all. Sure, he was a little bit sad that they wouldn't be living in the dorms with each other, but they'll live together in their own home someday. He can wait a bit longer for that day to come. What's really important is that Rosalie will get a jump in her career once she graduates and make more money. All he cares about is her happiness and success. He could never be mad at her for that. The distance between the University of Brightchester and Foxbury Institute was slim to none. They can meet after classes in Gibbs Hills. They can spend weekends at each other's dorms. They will make it work. He was so proud of Rosalie. He knew she was incredibly smart and talented. Getting offered a distinguished degree of her own was amazing. Rosalie felt so foolish after all that praise from her fiancé. How could she ever think that he'd be upset with her? especially about their future. Finley comforted his poor, nervous fiancé. Everything was fine, no matter what. He was going to make this work. She was always worth the effort. Since that was finally out in the open, they got to talk about everything college, which classes they were taking, comparing their schedules, setting up times to meet at the bars and parks in Gibbs Hills, how Rosalie was planning on joining the debate guild to increase her research and debate skill. She was so excited 
to get on with this chapter of her life and eventually start her career. But you know one thing that wasn't brought up? The wedding, not one word about Finley's future wedding was spoken, because Rosalie was planning on talking about that subject with somebody else. Rosalie gave her man a warm goodbye and wished him safe travels. They would see each other the next day once Rosalie gets to Brightchester and settles into her dorm. Until then, she would finish packing and stop by a friend's house to say her goodbyes. She walked across the street to Courtney's and JJ's home. Oh my god, is that August's ashes? just sitting on the cold hard ground. At least show the man some respect and put him on the coffee table. Rosalie found her good friend Courtney James in her kitchen chatting with her brother, Joaquin Britton. Um. Courtney, what on earth is that? Thank goodness, it's just a food baby, not an actual baby, I nearly shit my pants, I can't imagine another doomed child, speaking of doomed children, Rosalie went ahead and looked for her godson JJ, she was so happy to see him, he certainly looked happier than he did during her last visit, Rosalie briefly chatted with Joaquin before putting JJ down and heading to the backyard with Courtney, she wanted some privacy for their discussion, First, she caught up on Courtney's life, finding out that Courtney was attending Foxbury Institute for an art history degree. She would be taking classes fully online because of JJ, but she was so excited to start tomorrow, Rosalie told her a bit about her excitement for her distinguished history degree as well. She then showed Courtney photos from her Tartosa trip, and that was when she dropped to bombs. Her aunt Finley made woohoo and he proposed to her. Wow, that was a lot for her small brain to comprehend. Courtney congratulated Rosalie, and of course, she had questions, especially about the woohoo. Who? Was it? You know? Sizable. Oh, it was definitely sizable, Rosalie said. Courtney figured she always thought Finley had BDE. Rosalie made it clear that Finley did get the job done, and Courtney was happy to hear that. Now, about the engagement. Can she be in the wedding? Yes, she could be in the wedding. Courtney also wondered how Rosalie felt about that, considering they were so young. God, why does everyone keep saying that? Rosalie started to wonder if everyone was able to read her mind. It was a bit of a shock, she told Courtney, but she did say yes to his proposal and would be marrying him sometime in the future. She just didn't know when. Courtney was getting good at reading Rosalie like a book. She was having doubts, wasn't she? What? Okay, fine. She didn't doubt marrying Finley. She loves him so much and he's the best thing to ever happen to her. She would love to be his wife in the future. She wants to get her degree and go to the college parties and grow up a bit more before settling down and calling herself a wife. She just hoped that Finley's not hoping to marry soon. She doesn't exactly know since they haven't talked much about it. She was just worried about disappointing him, like she was about telling him about Brightchester. Courtney agreed that Rosalie was definitely too young to be married. Girl, you have a whole immaculate conception, baby. She tried comforting Rosalie a bit, telling her to just be honest with Finley. It's her life, after all. And she's entitled to focus on herself first before settling down. She can't keep worrying about disappointing him. Rosalie thanked Courtney for the sound advice. She was really going to miss her. Courtney said she will miss her too. They'll text every day and chat whenever they get the chance. Courtney told her bestie to have fun at Brightchester and to open up to Finley about the engagement. They ended up becoming best friends in the process. Not JJ's family ignoring him being sad. Shortly after, she got back home to find a surprise waiting for her at her front door. Bag of bone speckles had returned from God knows where. Girl, you look a mess. Rosalie was so relieved to have her childhood kitty back home and back in her arms. Even if she smelled horrendous, I know damn well you weren't rolling around in trash girl. After greeting Speckles, Rosalie couldn't help but walk a few feet in front of her and to her mailbox. Even though she just talked about it the night before with her mother Gwyneth, she was still curious to see if her father Joseph Bastianich 
had reached out to her. Just like she'd expected, he hadn't. There was nothing from him in the mail. She hated to admit this, even to herself. But she was devastated that she hadn't heard a thing from her father since she visited him in Oasis Springs. She didn't understand, and probably never will, why he hated her so much. What? Just because she reached puberty and grew a pair of boobs. Because she wanted him to get sober and go to therapy and actually be a good father. Where was the fight? Why wasn't he fighting to be a part of her life? Did their relationship mean nothing to him? The more she thought about it, the angrier she became. She put so much effort into their relationship, so much tender love and care. She was passionate about wanting a healthy relationship with him and made that clear. All of the tears, all of the fights, all of the pleads to her mother to give him another chance. Even when she knew, as a fucking child, that he didn't deserve one. It was all for nothing. Clearly, since he wasn't fighting to be back in her life, she really did hate him, for hurting her, for hurting her mother, for being a permanent stain on her life that she'll be questioning and pondering over until the day she dies, most likely. But you know what? It's fine. She's a grown woman. She's engaged to an amazing man. She has a great relationship with her loving, supportive mother. And Bella's, well, Bella's there, she's going off to college and is going to make something of herself. And she's going to do it all without him. Perhaps she should become a new woman entirely and change her last name from Bastionich to Westwood. The morning soon came, Gwyneth and Tanisha waking up at the crack of dawn to spend some time with each other before going back to their lie of being just friends. You know what probably isn't helping that? The fact that you'll are making out in the hallway where either one of your daughters can catch you. They went back to Gwyneth's room once they heard Bella, who had no plans to say goodbye to her big sister. She was glad she was leaving home. It would be nice to be the center of attention in this family for once, maybe even take Rosalie's bigger room. Seems like Bella had grown a pair. Because today, for the first time since elementary school, she would be attending school in her alien form. She wasn't giving a single fuck anymore. She was gonna rock her alien form everywhere she goes, whether the Sim Nation likes it or not. She was totally confident, and not because she'd heard a certain someone that used to bully her was transferring to Copperdale High School. No, not at all. Once Bella left, Gwyneth pulled Tanisha into the bathroom with her to talk about something. Gwyneth was a fool when she was young. She wasted the prime of her life on Joseph, a man that never really loved or cared for her. She could go on and on about that, but she doesn't want to make her life about him anymore. She wants to make it about her and Tanisha. Gwyneth has the potions of youth in her hands that she got from some sketchy site on the internet. They look safe enough, right? She was not ready to become an elder, which was supposed to happen today. She has so much more she wants to live for, like seeing Rosalie and Bella graduate or start families. And, of course, to share a long, rich marriage with Tanisha. If she were to age up today, they wouldn't have much time together. And Gwyneth feels that she deserves to feel genuine love and happiness for longer than that. She was going to reset her age back to the early days of adulthood, and she'd like if Tanisha would do that with her. That way, they can live out their adult years all over again together. And when they're old and senile, die right beside each other, and there was nothing that Tanisha wanted more, of course she would take the potion. So, it looks like we'll have Gwyneth around for a little bit longer than originally planned. Or, at least, I hope. Rosalie was wide awake, dressed up, and packed up, ready to head for the airport and away to Brightchester. She was a bit nervous, but excited more than anything else, giving herself just the pep talk she needed before heading downstairs with her suitcase in hand, and she'd packed all of her pictures with her, besides one. Gwyneth and Tanisha walked Rosalie outside to give her a proper send-off. Our founder doing her best to not cry. She still couldn't believe Rosalie was a woman. She remembers the day she took her home from the hospital. Even though being with Joseph was a terrible mistake, it wasn't a mistake she completely regretted. Because at the very least, she got her beautiful daughter Rosalie out of it. And she didn't know what she would do without her. She was going to miss her so much, she wants her to call at least once 
once a week. Be safe with Finley. Don't do hard drugs and be responsible with the drinking. Don't elope without telling her, please. And do her poor old mother a favor and stop by to visit her during the holidays. Rosalie agreed to everything her mummy said. She was going to miss her like crazy, too. And with that, Rosalie was off to Bright Chester, ready to turn herself from celebrity chef Joseph Bastianich's daughter to Rosalie Bastianich, maybe Westwood, maybe broke, the future greatest politician the Sim Nation's ever seen.